Hey, it's Joey and Mike, BrewDashDudes.com. It's October. I guess it's time for Oktoberfest beers, whatever that is, right? Uh, are they Fest beers? Are they Marzins? I don't know. But there still are uh, homebrew shops all over America that uh, have uh, Oktoberfest lagers. <laughs> and uh, our friends at uh, Jasper's uh, homebrew shop, uh, you can find them at boomchugalug.com. They have a roll out the barrel Oktoberfest lager and I just picked up a kit because that was fun. Um, it's one of those things where you can uh, buy it uh, on one day and get it to your house the next day, at least from where I live. So that's what I did because the, Mike and I had this idea that uh, we would uh, brew a bunch of lagers and then probably just have our own little Oktoberfest you know, standing at our, or sitting like face to face and just, I don't know, drinking our own beer. Not that anyone else would come. Anyway, sorry, that just brought down the house. Let's talk about this beer. So I followed the recipe. We'll talk about the grain bill first. Um, 4.7 pounds of Pilsner malt, that's 2.1 kilograms, 47% of the grain bill. 3.2 pounds of Vienna malt, uh, that's uh, 1.5 kilograms, 32% of the grain bill, and 1.6 pounds of light Munich malt, uh, that's uh, 0.73 kilograms, 16% of the uh, grain bill, and then just for the hell of it, uh, 8 ounces, half pound of Carahel malt, uh, 227 grams, 5% of the grain bill. Um, of course, this comes in one big uh, plastic bag, you don't really see all the things separated. It just goes into your mill and you grind it up. Hops, okay. We talked about having a high alpha acid at the uh, beginning of the boil. Uh, this is has a quarter ounce, not a lot, um, but uh, seven grams of Polaris hops mm. at 21.8% uh, alpha acids. For, we boiled that for 60 minutes. I did a 90 minute boil for this as well. Um, then I substituted some of the hops that I had, did a uh, one ounce of Hallatower German hops, um, so uh, 28 grams for uh, 20 minutes. That came in at uh, 3.2 alpha acids and then uh, finished off with um, one ounce of U.S. Tetanang, again that's what I had, 5.7 alpha acid, 28 grams. Just put that in as flame out. See what happens. Um, the yeast we used was uh, Lalleman's Diamond Lager Yeast. Used a couple packets of this. And then uh, water. So we did something different because as you talked about during your cream ale, you said, you know, spring water, man. Why not, right? So yeah. I used all spring water, but then just add a little bit of calcium chloride to this four grams just to, you know, get the calcium up. Uh, so, so no gypsum uh, additions to this, just calcium chloride. Again, just playing around, seeing what that gets me. Uh, this, the starting gravity for this was uh, 1052. Finished off at 1012. Was a little happier about this one than the other one. I'm not sure why the other one finished at 1014. That's the uh, German pills that we talked about last week. Um, five gallon batch. Um, Mashed at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 60 degrees, uh, 66 degrees Celsius. And then this one actually fermented at three weeks. And then I just kegged it up, hit it with gelatin um, to clear it up. And then that's really it. Um, again, since this was formulated by a homebrew shop, it's always fun to give these a try without thinking about it and get something that's like, oh, look. It's, it's kind of amber. <laughs> and then that's it. So what do you think about it? Like, let's talk about how it looks and then uh, tell me more about the flavor. Yeah, I don't know how well it come across on camera, but it's, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a touch darker than s straw. Straw. Yeah. It, I guess this is gold. You, you know, yeah. this is really more gold. It's not really pushing copper it's more gold in color yep, so I agree um, so for me from that standpoint of traditional like American traditional concept of what Oktoberfest is like I'd like it to be a little bit more in that copper light amber sure. 
range, but I don't know exactly what they're going for. This color actually reminds me more of, it's probably like the, this, the, the color of this is really more uh, what we would call today German fest beer. Yeah, I think, right? So, so but if, if you let, if you like me to tell you what the recipe says, it was going for a six SRM, a deep gold, like a treasure yeah. in your stein. I mean, with a description like that. Oh, well, my whole attitude has changed now. <laughs> um, so, uh, I get a little bit more malt character. There's definitely a subtle, noble hop nose to it, but it's not strong. I mean, I'm really digging in there for it. Um, but on the flavor, there's more of a noble hop zing. Yeah, you're in right. There. It's a little bit more of that uh, halatau, even some of that tetanang, there's a little bit of a spice there. And the bitterness level is noticeably higher, despite <laughs> the fact that, I mean, a 21% alpha acid hop. But it's a crazy. little bit. I know. A little bit. Um, but you can definitely feel it, taste it. So yep. that's like refreshing. Yep. Um, the overall malt profile flavor is subdued. It's relaxed. It's not, um, <laughs> it's not like, with you. it's not giving me what I want in an Americanized Oktoberfest, which is just a little bit more malt kick. Yeah. Um, it's not pure Pilsner in its flavor quality. So there's a little bit more depth there to it uh, as we talk and it warms up. Maybe, uh, uh, you know, I can, on the back of my mouth, I can just barely get a little bit of like that Vienna light toastedness, mm. right? Um, the Munich, the light Munich, probably which is the same color as the Vienna almost, is probably, I, light Munich I think is like six anyway, about six love. So um, it's working, it's good. I mean, it's super drinkable, it's dry, it's, um, it presents drier than, than a straight Pilsner beer does, a uh, Pilsner malt beer does, and um, I'm digging it. The, uh, the yeast profile, is a little bit, is certainly different than the Mangrove Jacks. Yeah. Um, but it's not um, super strong. I, I don't even know what the origin of diamond lager yeast is. Is it, it a German it, lager yeah, or, is it a, a or is it a product of else? Austria? Well, not, okay. not, I don't know if it's just made there. So, um, sure. Or is that like their high performance lager yeast? I can't Maybe, remember. I don't but know. It's, um, it's clean. There isn't an, any strange ester note to it there. Uh, or, you know, additional ester mm. note. Um, otherwise, I mean, I think it's, it's a great ferment. And then, of course, too, there's no, there's no hint in the nose or on the palate of something that would be diacetyl worthy. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Again, this was uh, fermented at the same temperature as yep. the German pills. You know, it was the same, like, refrigeration chamber. Yep. <laughs> and I think that I've gotten to the point where I can pro I can do two at the same time. Yep. I have the space. Try to put a, a third carboy in that refrigerator. You can't do it w without, you know, having the door open. Yeah. So um, I can get three uh, uh, Santa kegs in there, but uh, for carboys only two. Um, so yeah, that's it. I, 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 you know, again, I was just trying to Brew another lager, had the ability to, had yeah. the uh, opportunity to get this very quickly. Um, I hear you. I think that I'm with you on all your notes. The color, you know, because I'm a silly American, wants it to be darker. I, I, I want Sam Adams I Oktoberfest. Mean, I, I want it to be darker, but I'm, I want it to be darker I'm, because there's also a little bit more uh, car caramel malt punch to it. I want a little bit more munich quality yeah to it, right like in this exact same recipe if it was subs in with the same quantity but just dark munich i think there'd be a little bit more hmm. of a bready note to got it, it right yep. like a 20 love a bond like i'm thinking specifically you know brace makes 10 love and 20 love that's their light and dark yeah german light and dark is something like six versus nine yeah right but i'm talking like 20 love american munich malt would probably really give you a good squeeze of of that bready yep. bread crust thing. That's what I want as an Oktoberfest. Not necessarily caramelly, I didn't really mean to say it that way, but that, that, that deeper sort of wheat malt bread flavor, yeah. malt flavor, yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if you just replace the, the Cara Hell and you just uh, take the percentage there and then add you know the dark Munich that you're talking about mm -hmm. and see what that does. Um, 
I'm glad that the hops came through. Yeah. I actually got, I'm actually getting more hops in the nose than, than you said. Yeah. When I first, when I first smelled it, I was like, oh, wow, there's yeah. something there. Um, but certainly the, the malt comes through. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. I th actually kind of enjoy this one more than the uh, German pills that was all my, you know, creation, right? <laughs> um, this one, I was like, oh, I'm just going to follow this sheet of paper and, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, that's what you get when you do, um, you know, this beer is completely drinkable, definitely doable. And from a, from a homebrew store standpoint, like if you're not really into recipe formulation and you're just buying kits. I know people who just brew straight with kits. Full ki this would be a very satisfying yeah. beer. And depending, no matter where you were in your brewing uh, expertise, career ladder, um, this is what you want to come out like as a lager. Because the only thing that I would tweak in this, like I would, wouldn't change anything about the fermentation, would just be playing with the malt bill a little bit yeah. to give you something that you wanted. But this is a highly drinkable lager. Yep, that's awesome. And I mean, I played with this too because I, it came with hops and I replaced it with my own hops. I, um, I'm trying to look to see like what it said for, for some of these uh, instructions. I think I just said, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna boil this for 90 minutes. I'm gonna mash for 90 minutes. Um, and then I'm gonna treat it with water. What, what do you think about the spring water and then just a little bit of calcium chloride? Well, aside from guessing on how much calcium, but you know, that is a different sure. aspect. But I think, you know, I, I've decided so far, I don't see a reason to pay a premium for distilled or RO water. When, if you look up the water profile of like Poland Spring, and if you have generic water from like your local grocery store, if you can look that up too, and like Hannaford's near us, they uh, you, the, you can find their water report. Oh, cool. It is super soft stuff. And yeah. the amount of minerals that are in there, I don't know, I just, I just decided it's not worth paying a premium for the distilled water. Um, and I can get the three gallon cubes and just walk out with fewer of those rather than walk out with 12 one gallon jugs, and just more plastic waste too. I don't know, the RO water thing versus the, you know, so you add one gram less of something, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, if you're yeah. using the, if you're yeah. calculating the numbers pretty tightly, yep. um, it really is almost trivial a difference. So Han certainly is trivial, it makes no difference on the mash chemistry. Yes. So Hannaford actually has the four gallon jug that you can get. Oh yeah, the jug jug. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that makes it even easier. I know you're yep. saying three, like I know yep. what you're talking about, the, the ones with the handle, yep. but I, I got, you know, two of those and one, one, yep. one gallon. I was good to go, nice. ready to go. So. Nice. I think that's what I got. I think yeah. I actually went in for like a special trip just to get mm -hmm. spring water. I was like, yeah, one of those, one of those. People must think like, you thirsty? He's thirsty. <laughs> I <laughs> no, am thirsty. Okay. I'm going to make beer with this water. I don't you know who I am? I'm a home brewer. Um, so, all right. Well, I'm, what do you think? I'll, I'll ask you one last question okay. and we'll wrap up. Do you like this one better or did you like? I like this one better. Yeah, me too. Boom chug a lug. But that being said, it's not October festy enough for me. Right. If you had said to me, I brewed a German fest beer, it's a style we don't have any experience with, here it is, I'd be like, wow, this is German fest beer. Yeah. Right? I'd be like, this is great. Yeah. Um, but you lead with Oktoberfest, and I know what I want when it comes down to Oktoberfest. And um, it literally is one grain swap in the recipe to All make right. it work. Um, make it to make it be exactly what you're talking about. Those Martzen style. Yeah, like yeah, when, yeah. when someone says to me Oktoberfest, like let's not even beat around the bush about like American eyes Oktoberfest. I want a Martzen yep. in October. Yep. And if anything, I want it extreme, a little more extreme, just a little bit more of that bready toasty thing. To me, that's what that's what Oktoberfest is. Which it isn't, it's just beefed up Martzen, <laughs> right? I don't even think they use Oktoberfest in the BGCP anymore. It's Martzen yep. and Fest beer. Yep. So. Well, I'll call up ja Jasper and we'll uh, talk about the naming or renaming of this particular yeah. recipe. It'll be Roll at the bar Barrel Fest beer. And if then, you roll this out to some of our friends and say, I made this thing called German Fest beer, it's to celebrate Oktoberfest. Yeah. It's, it's not what you're used to, but it's this is what they drink, Fest beer. I'll keep my mouth shut and I will enjoy it to the All fullest. Right, and well, they'll go, wow, this is amazing. I've never had Fest beer before. If, we, if we're able to get people to come to our Oktoberfest 
And it's just, it's not just you and me. Right. And then, yes, please keep your mouth shut. And we'll uh, do the old, uh, <laughs> see, it's all about marketing. We can, uh, we can convince anybody, anything, if we just have the right story. There we go. All right. Thank you for watching our video. Uh, we enjoy this and hopefully you enjoy watching us. Uh, we certainly, you know, dig doing it. So if you uh, like this video, give us a thumbs up. It only gives us more uh, reason to keep doing this. So if that's what you want, let us know. Uh, if you uh, dig this kind of content, subscribe to our channel. We do this kind of thing every single week. For John and Mike, brew-dudes.com, brew on. Cheers. Cheers.